In March 2021, Linda and Reggie Martin had their savings seized by the FBI from a deposit box, and the couple has been unable to get their $40,200 back. The agency has not explained why they are still holding their money, and the couple has filed a lawsuit in conjunction with the nonprofit Institute for Justice. This is just one example of the many instances where people's rights to their property have been violated by law enforcement agencies using civil forfeiture. Civil forfeiture allows the government to take assets suspected of being involved in criminal activity, even if the owner is not charged with a crime. This has led to widespread abuse of power by law enforcement agencies, as they are incentivized to seize property in order to supplement their budgets. In this case, the FBI raided the Beverly Hills, California branch of U.S. private vaults and seized more than $86 million in cash, as well as jewelry and gold, from 1,400 safe deposit boxes held by hundreds of people who were not suspected of any crimes. The couple were keeping $40,200 cash in their box and only found out about the raid on local news. Months after the raid, the FBI sent forfeiture notices, telling hundreds of box holders, including Martin, that, the government wanted to take their property forever, even though they were not named in the indictment against the company. The Institute for Justice, who is representing Martin in a class action lawsuit, said, they were just supposed to identify owners so they could claim their property, but the FBI instead acted on its months-old plan to search and try to forfeit the contents of any box worth more than $5,000. The lawsuit, filed on March 7, accuses the FBI of violating the Fifth Amendment, which requires the government to provide specific factual and legal reasons for forfeiture. This case highlights the need for reform of civil forfeiture laws, which have been used to seize billions of dollars worth of assets from Americans without due process. The current system incentivizes law enforcement agencies to seize property, often with little evidence or justification, and then profit from the proceeds of the forfeiture. Civil forfeiture laws have been criticized for their lack of transparency, lack of due process, and the lack of legal representation for property owners. Many people who have had their assets seized have been unable to fight back against the government, as the cost of litigation often exceeds the value of the property seized. There have been efforts to reform civil forfeiture laws at both the state and federal levels. Some states have passed laws requiring a criminal conviction before assets can be seized, while others have increased the burden of proof required for forfeiture. At the federal level, there have been bipartisan efforts to reform civil forfeiture, but progress has been slow. In the meantime, cases like that of Linda and Reggie Martin continue to highlight the need for reform. The government should not be able to seize property without due process, and property owners should have the right to legal representation and a fair hearing before their assets are taken. The use of civil forfeiture should be limited to cases where there is clear evidence of criminal activity, and the burden of proof should be on the government to demonstrate that the assets were obtained illegally. Until meaningful reform is implemented, Americans will continue to be at risk of having their property seized without due process, as Linda and Reggie Martin have experienced firsthand.